All right, gentlemen, today we're going to go over mushrooms. And no, not those ones. This is not the time for hallucinations. I'm talking about lion's mane mushroom, okay? Named after the luscious, silky smooth hair of Simba. You would be surprised, however, to know that lion's mane is not the only name of that supplement. It's also known as Hiracium irenaceus, monkey's head, Hotu, Eagle Stocklebart, Pom Pom Block, Hedgehog Mushroom, Satire's Beard, and Yamabushitake. Who's naming these? We're good with Lion's Mane Mushroom. We don't need 15 different nicknames. However, if something were to have 15 different names, then it better have 15 different benefits. Unfortunately, that's not the case with pretty much any supplement. We'd be you know, lucky to have one or two benefits for a particular supplement. If it had 15 benefits, this would not be called the Lion's Mane Mushroom. It would be called Magic Mushrooms, like the hallucinogens. Now, in this video, I'll be going over some of the studies on lion's mane mushroom. Hopefully it has one or two benefits or hopefully more. We'll see because it is one of the most popular supplements on Nootropics Depot. So it should have some benefits, right? Hope to God. Um, let's get started. Now, I would love to tell you how lion's mane works, but nobody knows. They assume it's because it's able to stimulate nerve growth cells, which are NGFs and brain cells. As we age, obviously our brain cells deteriorate. We have less and less of them and we start to, you know, kind of start forgetting things and losing our memory. So obviously brain function is a very important thing that we want to maintain throughout the course of our life. Realistically though, me and you don't really care about the mechanism. We care if it actually has any benefit, if it actually does something in the body. Scientists care about the mechanism, right? The first thing they do is to see, is there a proposed mechanism of how something could work? and then they test it on rats, and then if it works on rats, they test it on humans, and if it works on humans, it makes its way to me and you, and we're able to take that supplement because there is some benefit. If we just rely on science without testing it, we're not going to get anywhere. There's a lot of things that are supposed to work, you know, scientifically, but once we put it in the real world and half people take it, it does nothing. It's a dud. So we have to go in order. So in this case, I'm only going to look at human studies. We're not going to look at the science, the mechanism. We're not going to look at rat studies. We only care about human studies and what the outcomes are in those. So let's get started. So this first study we're going to look at is reduction of depression and anxiety by four weeks of Hiracium irenaceus intake. This is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, and apparently sexist. Females only. Apparently, the researchers in this study think that men don't have any anxiety or depression, which is false, no matter how hard your neighbor tries to act. Okay, so the dosing of this was 0.5 milligrams, and they took four cookies at any time of the day, so basically 500 milligrams four times a day. And the results of this study were from questionnaires. We have the KMI right here. We have CESD, we have PSQI, and then ICI. Questionnaires are not the best way to assess if a supplement or medication is working, but when it comes to mental health, it's kind of the only way that we can assess it because we don't have any you know, hard biomarkers in the blood for us to check. So pretty much questionnaires are the only way, but they're not very reliable because you know all they're asking is, do you have less depression? Do you have less anxiety? Are you a female in this case? Obviously the questions are more detailed and not that simple, but you get the idea. It's very easy to kind of be swayed by a placebo effect in a mental health questionnaire. All right, so let's go look at the results and you can see from table two that everything was non-significant. It didn't do a goddamn thing, the lion's mane. That's unfortunate. Nothing was statistically significant, not even by like a little bit. No benefit whatsoever. Um, we can look at these graphs here as well, and we don't see any benefit from lion's mane for anxiety and depression. But there are other studies that we can look at, as this one right here. Improving effects of the mushroom Yama Bushitake on mild cognitive impairment, a double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial. This one is obviously on brain function, so kind of like memory and Alzheimer's and something like that. And these people were not healthy people. They already had some kind of mild cognitive impairment. And a positive in this study is that it was both females and males. So not sexist. Now, again, these people already had mild cognitive impairment. So this is not healthy people. So we can't extrapolate you know, whatever results we get here and say that healthy people will not benefit. All right, so the dose of this Yama Bushitake was four 250 milligram tablets. So basically 1000 milligrams or one gram three times a day for 16 weeks. So a total of three grams or 3,000 milligrams every single day, which is a pretty high dose of lion's mane mushroom, much higher than the last one that we saw. All right, so whenever we look at the results of the study here by the Yama Bushitake or the lion's mane, we see that there was a statistically significant difference between the two groups, between the Yama Bushitake and the placebo. So there was an improvement in their scores. However, this is a very, very small improvement. And we can say that it's from lion's mane because not only is it statistically significant, but when we look at this, we see that after 16 weeks, when they stopped taking the lion's mane, their scores dropped back down. So we can kind of assume that the lion's mane did have a pretty good benefit here. Now, 
The score, however, is very, very small, the difference. It went from like a, let's say a 23.5 here versus a 27 up here. So a very, very small improvement, and this is only for people that already have mild cognitive impairment. So not much benefit in this scenario. And the authors also say something interesting down here by saying, although the way to complete prevention of Alzheimer's disease is also unknown, the data obtained in the study suggests that continuous intake of foods which promote NGF synthesis may be one of the effects of ways to prevent or to alleviate Alzheimer's disease. Yamabushi Take, like I said before, does increase NGF levels. So that what they're saying is if you take foods high in NGF or high in Yamabushi Take, that'll increase NGF levels. You will kind of get a good cognitive impairment prevention status for people that already might have Alzheimer's disease or on their way to it. All right, and here we have another study on Hiracium irenaceus saying oral intake of H. hirenaceus is safe and convenient method for dementia prevention so far. If we scroll down and look at the results, however, However, the total score for the ones that took lion's mane is 30 and the ones that did not take lion's mane or placebo was 29.5. Half a point. Half a point. Basically irrelevant. No clinical significance here whatsoever. It's like saying if I had $20 and I found a quarter on the floor. Yeah, technically I have more money. But what could I have done with $20.25 that I couldn't do with $20? Nothing. That extra quarter does nothing to change my life. Yes, the half a point increase is better, but it's not gonna make a difference in anyone's life. So I disagree with Yusuke Saitsu and Akemi Nishide when they say that oral intake is safe and convenient method for dementia prevention. It's not. So the science has spoken and those are mostly the only human studies we have on Lion's Mane. So none of them really showed any you know, actual benefits, very, very tiny benefits you know, in people that have mild cognitive impairment. But overall, not really a useful supplement. I wouldn't, you know, waste my money on this. For the most part, especially healthy people, there is no benefit for this. And unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there from people that are not referencing and are not saying where they get their sources from. And so we have, you know, they're just kind of lying on social media. Here, take a look at this video right here by Dr. Berg. This one could be considered like a natural Adderall, but without the side effects. Or any effects whatsoever. It does nothing. And I don't even know where you got the Adderall part of it from. I, it wasn't even tested for Adderall. It was tested for anxiety, depression, and mild cognitive impairment. Where'd the Adderall stimulant part of it come from? Lion's mane is specifically good for cognitive function, improving focus, concentration, memory. Where is he getting this information from? I just went over the studies. This is the only studies. It's not like there's some, you know, random study, you know, blocked and locked in a cage somewhere, the only he had access to. The title of the video is Mind Blowing Benefits, plural. It doesn't even have one benefit, no benefits. Mind blowingly has no benefit. Luckily though, in the small sample size of Lion's Mane, there were no, you know, side effects that were reported. So it is safe. It's just not very effective and, you know, Maybe anecdotally, it'll work for one person here and there or a few people here and there that kind of swear by it. But in general, for most people, this is not a supplement that's gonna make a difference. I get it, people wanna sell supplements and they'll sell you anything if they can convince you to buy it. But in this case, you know, we're going over the studies here. There is no benefit for this. I wouldn't waste my money on it. You know, I would love for something to cure anxiety and depression and dementia and world hunger, but lion's mane mushroom doesn't do it. Maybe magic mushrooms can do it, We'll have to look into some studies, but lion's mane mushroom doesn't do a goddamn thing. I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money. If you wanna try the supplement, go ahead because you might see benefit, you know, yourself. But generally speaking, if you give it to 100 people, you know, majority, 90, 95% will not see a benefit. Worst case scenario, you take it, it does nothing, and you forget you spent your money on it because you have mild cognitive impairment and the supplement did nothing. All right, thank you guys. See you next time.